That's more lobsters than I've seen my whole life in one place. <laughs> All right, it kind of looked like an angel and it was wearing like a crown. <laughs> it's gonna be one of the best beaches in the Caribbean. Freedom, you're off the boat. <laughs> Back it up, that is not the right way. That is to certain deaths. We'll take the two, that's dinner for us both. It's a nice dinner for us both, and we're done. We were initially intending to go to Guadeloupe, but as usual, our plans change. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. I'm Chiara, and this is Adam. A few years ago, we walked away from our life on land to pursue travel and adventure aboard our floating home, the Millennial Falcon. Last year saw us improving ourselves and the boat whilst we tackled our first Atlantic circuit. Join us as we come full circle back to the Caribbean where we'll commence preparations for our next big challenge. Last episode on Sailing Millennial Falcon. Uh, we're just going to do a short hop first of all, go down to St. Bart's. We are like bang on to where we need to be. Well, this is quite beautiful. Adam wanted to do some plane spotting. And I've never seen that point so calm. It might be a good opportunity today to check out the dive spots there and there. That's a nice little spot. Much more sheltered in here than I thought it was going to be. There's a courtesy ball for us. Rocky bottom and like probably 20 feet. We'll just see what the current's like and we'll head in and hopefully find something. This is how I roll. Ooh, I'm so buoyant. Oh, it's because it's a very fun. Losing control. So I take my love and hide it away. For those who are still till I find my own way. back there either tomorrow or like there are just so many spots around here I'm so astounded how good the nature is around here the the sea life is around here like it's there are turtles everywhere and they are not afraid and then down there it was like nurse sharks and we saw these little like cuttlefish things and like I should really really learn more names for the fish <laughs> All right, it kind of looked like an angel and it was wearing like a crown. <laughs> no, I thought the remora was a nurse shark. Oh, yeah, it's really cool. Can't wait to do a bit more snorkeling. Uh, so many lobster, they were really cool. Um, I'm really keen to like go around the corner outside of the national park and see what the sea life is around there. And if it is as good as here, it's not a national park. We might be able to pick ourselves up a lionfish. So we've just woken up next day after being in here and uh, we've had our first coffees and I thought it might be nice to actually just go for a walk on the beach. We haven't really done that for a little while. There's also a really nice walk kind of around the um, this bay. So the good thing, the cool thing about this bay is that you can't get to it with a car. You can obviously get to it for a, with a boat and so therefore it is still busy. Little speed boats kind of pop by. But 
anybody who wants to come to the beach needs to walk here. So we thought we'd take the walk around to see where it goes to. Park on the right hand side and walk. Yep. It's a minefield around. You're gonna go so slow because they're just fearless. They're like right there. They'll just pop up. Beautiful sand between your feet. Nice, I love this beach. It's gonna be one of the best beaches in the Caribbean. That is a very big call. It is a very big call. I don't know, we haven't been to everywhere we in the Caribbean either. We haven't been either. to every beach in the Caribbean and we're not going so, to. <laughs> don't it's take one our of advice. my favorite beaches in the Caribbean, how about that? Better, better phrased, better phrased. It's just beautiful and blue, it's like gorgeous, lovely. As well as the turtles. I think I'd just get so excited by turtles. <laughs> They're not necessarily my favourite animal, but God, every time I'm like, distraction. Ta -ta! Oh my God! <laughs> oh, how stunning is that? So nice. I knew I could smell it. Good thing there's no smell of vision. It's a bit pongy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's not that pleasant. <laughs> Freedom, you're off the boat. <laughs> I have this thing where I have absolutely no cabin fever issues. I think I was built to be like a solo sailor because I really just don't have the thing where it's like, oh, I've been, I've been on the boat for a while, better go stretch my legs. It just doesn't bother me for some reason. I just sort of start pacing the halls in the boat unconsciously and then I get my steps in, sort of. But whenever I come onto land, suddenly I'm like, ah, so much room for activities. <laughs> and then I realize just how out of shape I am because I'm immediately like, oh, oh. Oh my god. <laughs> and then I realized that I've been trapped inside 42 feet for the last two weeks. How long have you promised I honestly you don't know. Short? Would have been a, two I'd say weeks. At least a week. I'd at least say a week. Two weeks. He's very, very strange in this. Like, I definitely need to go to shore every, like, I think max I can usually do is about three days. And then after that, I start getting cabin fever and I need to kind of go, unless we're sailing, obviously, and then I really can't leave. So, when's the next Golden Globe? Maybe I miss my calling. Should I do the Golden Globe, ladies and gents, when the next time comes up and see how long I can stay alone on a boat and go full castaway? Can you take Millie? No, you're not allowed to take Millie, unfortunately. Who thinks Adam should do a, go a Golden Globe race sometime in his life? I think so. That'll be a whole six, you know, you to, six to, to nine months without him. <laughs> you have to be sure side support, you know. You have to deal with all my emotional outbursts when I'm at sea, like, I'm so <laughs> bored. <laughs> Although seemingly not because he can survive for a very long time without being bored on the boat. So yeah, if mm. I have enough books and enough games and enough uh, music, I'll be fine. I thought of having to walk all the way there in the hot sun. Granted, it's only 8.30 and I'm roasting. It doesn't really appeal to me, so I think we might head back and go for a swim. Oh, instead. Back it up. That is not the right way. That is to certain death. This is to slightly less certain death. We'll go there. That way. This actually is not a tough walk at all. I'm just making it look like that. <laughs> Bit of a dive, snorkel. I sorry, we around the corner, um, when there's a space outside of the marine park, which we're gonna try a hand at catching some fish there. Here 
Here we are, we're on the edge of the marine park. Other side of that rock wall behind me is uh, a marine park. So we're not gonna fish there, we're not gonna do anything there. But from that point to there, basically to Gustavia, it's fair game. So we'll see if we can do the public good and nail a few lionfish, if we can find any, I don't know. I saw one in the marine park and I was like, ah, I forgot these are a thing. It does look a little bit sparse along this coastline, I won't lie. I have a suspicion it's just gonna be lots of fallen rocks covered in mold, so no promises, but it's worth getting in the water, that's for sure. Dinner has been provided for for tonight. We'll see. We'll see what they taste what like. What fish did you get? I don't know. Uh, what did I get? I got two. <clears throat> I'm very finicky about which ones I take because I don't want to take like coral fish because they're very bony and not much good to anyone. And uh, so I like I'm not a fish encyclopedia and I should I want to be but just haven't bothered. But I've got this nice brim looking thing. It's my best guess as to what it is, but it's fairly neutral color. I have eaten like fish like this before. And so my thinking is, all right, and it wasn't a bad size. Always could be bigger. And this one is just a lovely gold. I see these all around too, and I'm pretty sure this is actually fair game, not bad eating, and it's really not a bad size. Like that's perfectly plate size, happy with that. We'll take the two, that's dinner for us both. It's a nice dinner for us both, um, and we're done. So yeah, I think that was a successful day, and I'm two for two. I spend more time reloading this bloody spear gun. I'm very much a Hawaiian sling fan. I just have broken all the rubbers on that. I spend more time reloading the gun usually than I do shooting it. Fortunately for me, I'm two shots, two kills, we're done. That was, well, what? how long were we in the water? Uh, half two hour. shots, two kills, 30 25. minute exercise, dinner is provided. God, I can't wait to be in the Pacific where it's just like, I'm off to the shops. <laughs> pew, pew, done. I've just been informed that I need to film the preparation of the fish. So, in summary, now you're all caught up. Garlic. You're a terrible cooking show. <laughs> Where's the like introduction to the, you know how everything is beautiful and marvelous show. and no. delicious and fabulous. Is... <laughs> Channel Jamie Oliver. Oh, did we decide, what, did we realize what fish these were? No, I haven't looked it up yet. Okay. I'm just gonna go like garlic and butter because you can't really go wrong with garlic and butter, right? And our friend Craig, who is a chef, he once made us this amazing fish on the barbecue. And he was just like, yeah, I just threw it on the barbecue. And I'm pretty sure that's like the exact instructions that he gave us. Possibly with butter, possibly with butter. But it was like the most delicious fish I've ever had. So I'm just gonna try doing that. We'll put some butter on here, throw it on the barbecue. And because I like garlic, I'm just gonna put some garlic in there too. Um, and we'll see how it goes. And that will certainly um, freshen up. That will certainly make a, a more exciting meal than the beans and rice that we were gonna have. So now we have beans, rice, and fish. So the period of calm is over, which is awesome. That's kind of why we came to St. Bart's was because we were like, ah, oh, well, while we're waiting for more wind to pick up, we may as well kind of go and explore another place. So the wind is starting to pick up a little bit, which is awesome. We're thinking that we should really head off from here. Um, our main aim right now is to head further south. We are in a place that we shouldn't be during hurricane season, and it is like the middle of August, and it's not a good time to be here, as per usual. Whenever we get back to the Caribbean, we're always in a place that we shouldn't be. We were initially intending to go to Guadeloupe, but as usual, our plans change. Pretty much, we now need to like, adapt our plans according to the weather, which is really annoying. At the moment, there's a bit of wind for about four to five days, I would reckon. And it is kind of like the perfect amount of time to do a good leg of sailing, you know? Um, so what we're thinking about doing is that instead of going to Guadeloupe, we're gonna head straight on down to Curacao. So it's about 500 miles. The wind should be really nicely kind of from the stern quarter. Um, so it should be a really nice angle. We're gonna take a four to five day weather window. We're gonna just 
belt south, um, do a 500 mile passage, which should take about four days, four and a half, five, who knows, um, all the way down to Curacao. It should be a pretty cool passage. We're looking forward to doing this because it's actually, it's a place that we haven't explored, which is awesome. We're kind of getting into new territory, which is like both Adam and I are super excited about it. So yeah, we're gonna head off from, head off from this mooring ball and um, pretty much just start sailing. <laughs> are we ready? <coughs> I think we are. Definitely no, uh, adds a little line in the water, so definitely no using the engine. Oh, turtle! He was so close! Oh, it's attractive, man. Wow, he was like just there. I get so excited with Such a calm bay, I don't know why we put three mooring lines on. Uh, just in case if it wasn't a calm day. Oh, it's not a turtle. Look. It's like they're waving us off. Oh, look at you. Look, look. Hey. Okay. Slip the mooring. Yep. Adam's looking here at me being like, why are you taking so bloody long? It's because I'm like, oh, turtle. I'm on the last line! Alright, chill out as soon as I can back off this mooring. Yep. So because we were so close to the rocks, uh, the mooring is like quite close to the rocks, we're just worried that uh, our boat might drift back onto the rocks after we let go of the mooring. And because we don't have as much um, maneuvering ability as like cats or, or boats with bow thrusters or smaller keels, um, we were just a little worried that we might kind of head in that direction and not be able to get out. So Adam's just reversing. <laughs> that was like a reverse Yui. That was great. Well, I know she backs to starboard typically, so I just gave it a big squirt in backwards and then full lock and then I just left it in reverse idle, which means the prop walk typically is more than the rudder steerage. So she just kind of did a nice reverse uh, you bolt really, it's just exactly what I expected her to do. Which is unheard of for this boat in reverse. <laughs> Absolutely unheard of. She must be in a good mood. How's that looking? Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm on the starboard. How are those reefs, big guys? Yeah, they're all pulled flat. beautiful but calm conditions so we're doing about 4.6 out of oh about seven so and it's kind of like just from the stern quarter so not too bad um, like really really nice flat conditions so it makes for a very cruisy run I think so it'll be nice mm -hmm. 